Many of the 81 veterans who boarded last week's never forgotten honor flight thought their service had been forgotten, but they soon realized that wasn't the case. News West 12's Lauren Stevenson joined them on the trip to Washington, D.C. and brings us this story. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Those two simple words meant more to our veterans than any monument or memorial they visited. I just couldn't believe that that many people would come out. And... Before veterans like Mercer's Joe Askey visited any of the monuments, their trip was already made. The terminal at Reagan National Airport came to a standstill. Business travelers, families, even people from overseas, all strangers stopped to clap shake our veterans' hands, and thank them for their service. Service many veterans thought was forgotten. I met somebody, I, a young person who I'd known for a number of years, and he asked me where I'd been. I haven't seen you. Mercer's Norbert Brosmer had been in Korea. Many of the people he knew couldn't find it on a map. I was startled, and then I was shook. When he got off the plane in Washington, D.C., 63 years later, Brosmer was startled again, this time for a different reason. It was powerfully uh, over, overwhelming. Thank you for your service. Oh, thank you. For some veterans, like Wisconsin Rapids' Ray Deach, words couldn't express what the recognition meant. Did you ever get recognition when you came yeah. home? Yeah, oh. Now you have. <laughs> it means a lot, doesn't it? Throughout the day, the phrase thank you was uttered thousands of times. Each time it touched our veterans. But it was a particular group's thank yous that might have meant a little more to our veterans. All right. Students from New Hampshire, Pennsylvania, and Texas lined up to utter those two words. One group of students from El Paso, Texas, decided to serenade Korean War veteran John Taskey Sr. He got students at four different memorials to sing with him. The thank yous didn't end once the vets got on the plane to head back to Wisconsin. Nice Springer. Just like in their service days, it was time for mail call. Thank yous came in envelopes full of 20, 30, even 70 letters. And when they touched down back home in Wisconsin, the thank yous went on and on. We're covering the news from where you live. Lauren Stevenson, News Watch 12. Some special stories there, and the recognition held special meaning for the Vietnam veterans on the flight. They fought a controversial and unpopular war with oftentimes no heroes' welcomes when they returned. Now, last week gave some of them a new outlook what people can think of them. That's coming up later this week. Uh, tomorrow, you'll meet Eagle River's Dr. Louis Jacobson. He served in Europe during World War II. He was Jewish, fighting Hitler's war machine. Hear a story and how he continued to serve others for nearly 55 years. Well, you can learn more and donate to the Never Forgotten Honor Flight by visiting its website. We have a link on our website, wjfw.com. Just click on the hot button. A retired Northwoods doctor flew to Washington, D.C. last week. He was one of 27 World War II veterans from North Central Wisconsin participating in the 19th Never Forgotten Honor Flight. Nearly 70 years ago, he came home from Europe. He was a young Jewish American soldier who spent a year and a half fighting Hitler's war machine. I was lucky to join Dr. Jacobson and other veterans on the flight. Dr. Lewis Jacobson returned to Washington, D.C. last week. The city played a major role in his life after he returned from serving two and a half years during World War II. The 18 months was with uh, service overseas in Europe, England, France, and Germany. He was one of approximately half a million Jewish people who served in the American Armed Forces during World War II. I felt very strongly about it. It was pure brutality 
a absolutely unheard of in those days. But like many of the veterans on this month's never forgotten honor flight, Jacobson didn't like to make a big deal of his service, especially the fact that he could have been in even graver danger had he been captured. I really didn't think about it. I had a chore to carry out as an infantry rifleman, and that was it. Dr. Jacobson carried out his chore and came home. Others weren't as lucky. It brings back the, the memory of your, the comrades with whom you served and knowing that they didn't make it. But Dr. Jacobson made it, and you could say he's made the most of his life. He went to Georgetown University on the GI Bill. He then became a doctor and spent most of his 54-year medical career serving the Eagle River community. And I'm just starting to hear all the stories of all the ways he served over 50, 60 years or so. Um, he's done so much, so service extended beyond military service and serving the country and serving a great community as well. Dr. Jacobson appreciated all the thank yous and cheers he got from strangers throughout the day. He said there wasn't much celebration when the war ended. They just made a few acknowledgments and we all went back to bed. He also says there wasn't much celebration when he returned home nearly 70 years ago, but the welcome home from an icon was enough. And I saw Lady Liberty, with her right hand extended, welcome me home. I was full of goose pimples. Seventy years later, the goose pimples likely came back when he finally got his welcome home celebration. Dr. Jacobson's two sons accompanied him on the trip. Someone who wasn't able to make it was his grandson. His grandson currently serves in the same division he served in during World War II. Now, his grandson initially got leave to surprise his grandfather on the trip, but duty called and he needed to stay back. To learn more about the Never Forgotten Honor Flight and to donate, head to our website, WJFW.com, and click on the hot button. The series continues tomorrow on Newswatch 12 at 5. Last week, 81 World War II Korean and Vietnam War veterans from our area flew to Washington, D.C. free of charge to see the memorials that stand in their honor. It can be a challenge to convince the veterans to participate in the Never Forgotten Honor flight. They're humble and many feel like there are plenty of other veterans who are more deserving of the opportunity. One veteran who took some convincing is Dan Ritz of Abbotsford. When I just felt I never was qualified to go. It took a couple of years to convince Dan Ritz to go on the never forgotten honor flight. Ritz served stateside as a radio repairman from 1950 to 1953. Well, I didn't think I did do what the people did that to give their lives and everything for it. He may not have seen a war zone, but he sacrificed. He put his life in danger more than once. Ritz was required to learn parachute jumping. Wind caught my chute, and my chute was up in the air while I'm hitting the ground. So I kind of woke up with a helicopter above me, and I said, I'm just fine. Ritz was 18 years old at the time. 63 years later, he says he still has a dent in the back of his head. His unit was selected to observe a nuclear bomb explosion. He returned to the National Atomic Testing Museum in Las Vegas a few years ago. Ritz says museum workers were surprised he was still living. And when the atomic bomb went off, we were in the trenches, and the wind came past us, and the sand just about covered us. And then the suction, when it came up, it just about pulled us out of the trenches. He is very humble, and to me, it says a lot about um, being a good role model for other people, the willingness to go and serve. Jean Schreiner convinced her dad to go on the flight. It was a family affair. Jean's brother served as one of the flight's medics, and Jean's husband and his father, also a Korean War veteran, made the trip as well. And my dad served in the First World War. I had three brothers that served in the Second World War, and then the three younger ones, we were during the Korean conflict. I feel like I should really be going to see the, the things that are there because they're not here anymore.
I've only got one brother that's living yet. Fritz may have finally realized he deserves the recognition. I normally don't break down in tears, but I went through tears all the way to the airport. Now we thank him and all other veterans for their service. To learn more about the Never Forgotten Honor Flight and to donate, head to our website, WJFW.com, and click on the hot button. The series continues tomorrow night at 5. Veterans who fly on North Central Wisconsin's never forgotten honor flight to Washington, D.C. get no shortage of cheers, handshakes and hugs. Those signs of appreciation from family, friends and complete strangers likely mean a little more to one group of veterans. Vietnam veterans fought a controversial, unpopular war. They got no welcome home, but April's flight gave them a welcome home 40 years in the making. I could still feel uh, the rotten eggs hitting me as I walked across the tarmac to the air the terminal. Vietnam veterans like Larry White of Wausau didn't get the homecoming they deserved. It was called baby killer. That hurts, and it hurts to this day. My wife and I went out to supper and had a beer and some smart aleck throwed a M80 firecracker under my st stool in the bar. Those memories of terrible treatment have stuck with Vietnam veterans for more than 40 years. Bill Watkins didn't serve in Vietnam. He served in Germany in the 1960s, but regardless, wouldn't talk about his service. I wouldn't even say that I even had I was even a Vietnam era veteran because I didn't want to be called a baby killer and, uh, you know, among other things. April's never forgotten honor flight helped to heal some of the pain and hurt that stuck with Vietnam veterans. I, I don't think it ever can be topped. I, I, just, I just can't believe it that there's a lot of people recognize it for us doing it for our freedom. Everywhere they traveled, our Vietnam veterans got the thanks, cheers, and hugs they deserved. And that made me feel real good. Certainly long overdue. Yes. When you were at the... the... Sorry. And at the end of the day, they got the chance to confront the past and remember their friends and loved ones who never made it home. Well, he was one of the friends that lived in our, my hometown, and, and uh, we miss him. And four decades later, when they got off the plane. We are home. That's what it means. To learn more about the Never Forgotten Honor Flight and to donate, head to WJFW.com and click on the hot button. The series continues tomorrow. Local veterans got the thanks they deserve when they took the Never Forgotten Honor Flight to Washington, D.C. last month. For many, it was a chance to share their special day with a loved one. Their children, grandchildren, and other family members served as their guardians on the flight. They, in many cases, convinced the veterans to go. It's a great uh, honor to be, be able to go with him. Steve Krepidlusky wanted his father James, a Korean War veteran, to travel on the Never Forgotten Honor flight. His dad felt there were other people who were more deserving. But James' wife Maggie urged him to go. She passed away about two months ago and uh, wish she could have been here to witness my departure and arrival back again because uh, she really was part of my life. April's never forgotten honor flight allowed James and Steve to spend time together and carry out Maggie's wish. Like James, Dick Simon took some convincing. His grandson Andrew, also a veteran, wanted to honor his grandfather. That was really something. I never expected that. Andrew Simon's favorite part of the trip? Just being with my grandpa and uh, Knowing that he gets to see this and, you know, I get to see it and hopefully, you know, 
this honor flight is still going when I'm his age, maybe. <laughs> and hopefully my grandkid or kids can take me and do this. For many families, the trip's about passing memories and honor from generation to generation. World War II veteran Louis Pizer's children and grandchildren joined him in Washington, D.C. made me feel real good that there are people that, that realize that what we were there for. He's always said, oh, it doesn't matter. It happened 50, 60 years ago. Nobody cares about that anymore. And this whole thing today, I think, shows him otherwise that people that still really care. do care. Yeah. We love him very much. Yeah, yeah. we're yeah. proud of him. <laughs> he's amazing. <laughs> and he's so strong. Oh, that's another thing. He's just, he's... It was certainly an honor and privilege to join our veterans on the Never Forgotten Honor Flight. Remember to thank a veteran and all of our service members. As you've seen this week, a simple thank you means a lot. To learn more about the Never Forgotten Honor Flight and to donate, head to WJFW.com and click on the hot button.